Welcome everybody to this week's version of GRRP Office Hours. Uh, glad uh, folks have already uh, logged in. Um, just to remind folks um, of our basic uh, basic ground rules, uh, well, please remain muted uh, as you come in and uh, raise your hands to ask a question. We'll call on you on your order. And if you've got any written questions or complicated, nuanced questions that need to are better done in writing. Well, we can we can accommodate those through grrp at hunt.gov. We might we might uh, if if you raise something and it needs to be we need a little bit more time to figure it out. We might we might direct you there as well. Um, uh, a couple of quick things we went through this last week, but in case folks may have missed it, one of the things we're seeing in applications um, that slows us down a little bit is. Um, the UEI numbers for, for um, applicants. Just a reminder, we want to make sure folks are using the project level UEI number, not um, not like the sponsor or parent uh, company um, uh, UEI number. That uh, we should uh, remind folks to make sure that matches across the application form and the SF424 um, and that it's registered in the same .gov. And lastly, before we get to questions, just to remind folks of the application windows that are coming up, the next one that's closing will be uh, leading edge application app, app, um, uh, 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 application period on October 31st, on uh, Halloween. Um, and then we've got uh, uh, a month after that, we'll have the comprehensive NOFO application period closing November 30th. Okay, uh, with that, let's uh, let's go to questions. And, and, and yes, I think you are first. Uh, I am working with Catholic Elder Care in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's a senior resident. The MOR uh, reviewer come out. And is that person the same person that does the environmental review or is that someone else? This is for an elements grant. Uh, no, that is someone else. So the um, HUD staff does the management and occupancy review. Uh, for the environmental review, you as the owner would procure the reports that, that are needed, uh, and you would submit those uh, to HUD through the HEROES system, um, HUD's environmental review online system. Um, All right. And and, and and that's actually done by 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 our office. It's a, the office of recapitalization, a, 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 a different office than the individual that that's doing the MOR review. You know, let me back up. Um, we're just applying for a hero's account, and um, so we need an environmental. It says has to be done by an environmental consultant with previous heroes experience. So we don't know who our HUD can contact is for environmental review. How do we find that out? Uh, you're looking for a HUD contact that is going to perform the environment that'll do that'll actually review the reports that you um, procure. Well, this is the this is the question on the uh, Heroes application. Who is your HUD contact for environmental review? Oh, I see. I'm sorry about that. So in the NOFO, the name that we've listed is Kara Williams Keith. Uh huh. Uh, so if you just do a Control F to find the name Kara, you'll find her email address. Oh, um, so she's our contact. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm, okay. I'm sorry, that was, that was a little, uh, roundabout way to answer your question, yeah. Oh, okay, well, thank you very much. And so we don't have to worry about getting an environmental consultant. Uh, if, do you already have the reports? We do not necessarily. They're not so you, necessarily updated. You're going to need an environmental consultant to do the reports and submit it into Heroes, or uh, or, or an experience, you know, an, an environmental engineer. Um, uh, uh, so so it won't be HUD staff who are who are doing the actual on-site um, uh, it, c collection of information in order to produce the reports. Uh -huh. uh, the 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 name that you are looking for there is just who it's who it who the reports will be submitted to, and that will then be reviewing the reports after they've been produced. Okay, so do we ask um, your HUD staffer who we should use for an environmental consultant? 
That's what I'm getting at. Well, I see. We, we can't recommend anyone in particular, but I think you'll be able to, you know, internet searches and or talking with other um, um, uh, other HUD participants. You, you know, I'm sure you'll find a, a, there, there, there are a lot of qualified consultants out there. So if I put in environmental consultant, hero's experience, that's what I'm going to be doing. I can't tell you exactly what search will work, but I'm sure that one will work. Okay. I, I didn't know if you had like a list like the insurance companies have, et cetera. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Sorry to take so much time. Sure. Okay, Elias. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So um, in our proposed project, the, the seller of the property is going to be included in the ownership structure of our LIHTC transaction. Mm -hmm. And they will be making, there, there'll be a cash out proceeds uh, or event when that acquisition takes place. And when I fill out the leading edge application, it asks me to essentially reduce the acquisition price by the amount that the seller is cashing out because they are in the current or the proposed ownership structure. Um, so I'm just wondering, like, you know, our LIHTC investor is going to require us and the deal to earn the full developer fee, but it says in the, in the, um, in the HUD notice from May that that developer fee, I mean, the developer fee is capped at roughly 15% of eligible basis. And, uh, if we include the cash out proceeds, we're, we're above that limit. So I'm just trying to figure out if I'm understanding this correctly and, and how I should show it so that the owner can make their you know proceeds on the acquisition as we've negotiated and the LIHTC deal can still earn its developer fee. Sure. So before I turn to Elena to see if she can advise on the app, filling out the application specifically, I can say more, more broadly, we don't govern ourselves the developer fee or any cash out proceeds through GRRP. Um, so uh, that is going to be subject to kind of state tax credit requirements and, and, and um, you know, any your, your other funding sources. Um, uh, but uh, specifically how to fill out the application and how to show that takeout financing. Um, uh, Alina, do you know uh, why um, the application might have been, might provide that instruction about um, kind of n not showing that, um, that, that the takeout financing? The, the, the takeout yeah, thing? I I don't. So I will follow up with the person on our team that is really an expert on the financial tabs of these application forms. Elias, if you could submit that in writing to grp at hud.gov, I will get it over to them um, this afternoon and, and get you an answer. Okay. Sounds good. So j just to be clear, it is the intent for a transaction like this to work where there's a cash out for the seller. Yes. But we still earn our developer fee? Yes. Okay. I will get that in writing to the GRP email. Thanks. Sure. Uh, Vital. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, so I have a couple of uh, quick questions uh, on behalf of my client. So what is uh, basically I saw a very cool uh, sp spreadsheet workbooks for application form. Uh, I'm specifically targeting uh, uh, elemental and leading edge, and they're very uh, detailed uh, application forms. So is that the only thing I will need to submit or uh, narrative is still separate, the four page or whatever the narrative is required? Because this has all the details. So it, I just would like to know that part. Yeah, so the full submission requirements are outlined in each of the notices of funding opportunity, the NOFOs. Um, so yep. you have to make sure you're you're submitting each of those items. Um, the uh, application, of course, itself, at the Excel application form is the uh, um, uh, most crucial kind of substantive submission uh, uh, allowing us to do the vast majority of our reviews. The narrative is there primarily for context. 
Um, it doesn't get evaluated itself. It's for you to explain the context of, or, or around which you're, you're applying in any other uh, kind of pertinent points um, okay. um, that, that we should, that, that we, need, we need to keep in mind. Um, but, but yeah, they're, it, 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 they're, they're both required. Thank you. And uh, another quick question is about uh, 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 basically green certification, or let's say we are going with renewable, particularly solar. And uh, uh, the, once the grant uh, project is started, and if for any reason there is any challenge, like say roof or uh, any other things related, and we couldn't do correctly, uh, what how exactly uh, those things are interpreted and how uh, how much uh, weightage uh, I mean uh, how, what are the challenges in that case? Sure, so, so whatever is committed in the proposal, uh, let's say that for any reason we couldn't complete it or mm -hmm. there is a barrier uh, for certification or barrier for say solar uh, kind of project. Mm -hmm. So how things work with that? Um, so Elena, Ben, correct me if I say anything wrong here that you see, but um, so when, when you apply, you're going to tell us uh, which certification you're pursuing. Uh, right. Once you're awarded, you won't be able to draw down on the funds yet. You'll need to give us a plan um, and then close on that plan. So you'll have fully defined the scope of work by the time you finish, finish that plan. So you'll ass assess whether solar is a viable option or you know, secure whatever other financing sources you may need. Um, and it could be that you determine, I can't achieve the certification I put in my application, but I, so instead I'll switch to a different certification um, uh, that, that is, would also be eligible. And, and that's okay. Um, it could be that you say, oh no, my, uh, you know, there's not enough, it's just not possible for my property to get to the certification. Um, uh, uh, after further due diligence, right? You would have already had sign off on the feasi initial feasibility right, right. In the application itself, but uh, you, you do some further due diligence and, and determine it's just not possible. In in that case, it's you, you, you know you, you might need to withdraw from from, from oh. the program. Um, it, it, worst case scenario, but um, you know ho hopefully, of course, we we can we can find sure, sure. another way to adjust. Right? And page no, 15, Vital, I'd, I'd direct you to page 15 of the notice, details okay. the disbursement schedule for leading edge and specifies that 10% of the funding is withheld until achievement of the certification. So I think that right. also might help you. That, that's great. Yeah. I mean, thank you. Thank you for uh, confirming all these details. That makes more clear. Okay. Uh, thank you. I think next up is Suit. Hi, thank you. Both of my questions are on the surplus cash loan. I see that there is a definition for the surplus cash, but can you clarify if that would come before or after paying the deferred developer fee? Uh, thanks for the question. So yeah, we've, we've gotten this question a few times from folks. It's one of the things we're, we're working on providing greater clarity to right now. So can't answer the question exactly, just to, but I can just say, uh, stay tuned. We, we, we're, we're aware that um, it's potentially an issue for, for uh, a number of possible applicants. Okay, I will definitely stay tuned. And then the second part of my question is, and you may not have the answer to this also, but does the payback on the loan happen during construction or after construction completion? After construction completion. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next up, David. Hey, um, so first time caller, um, I work for <laughs> long time listener. Um, I work for a group out of Atlanta. Uh, we own a portfolio of project based section eight housing. And, uh, so we're, you know, we haven't submitted an application yet. We're currently learning more about the product and the process. Um, so I think it'd be, it would be a good place to start if, if you could just kind of provide quick synopsis on the, um, on the benefits. Um, I'm primarily focused on the elements grant. I think that applies, you know, more so for for what we do. Um, so I think it'd be helpful if you could just address the the key fundamentals and details around this grant, you know, such as how it's funded, um, you know, the structure of the loan, if it's forgiven or amortized down over time, and 
um, sort of what the, the, the terms are um, for the grant. Um, so first of all, I'll point you to our website where we have a lot of great materials, um, some, some introductory materials. So hud.gov slash GRRP, um, to make sure you can, uh, 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 check that out after this. Um, but we'll try to give you a, a short synopsis of, of things. Uh, so the, the main benefit of course, is this is, uh, free or very cheap money, to make improvements to your assets, uh, specifically um, uh, decarbonization or, or, or resiliency improvements. Um, uh, within Elements uh, Awards, which is act, act, asked about specifically, um, uh, it's really Elements Awards are targeted at properties where you're already under planning to undergo some sort of um, recapitalization event. So you're already doing an FHA insured uh, refinance or you're doing, you know, doing tax credit rehab on a property or, or, or something like that. And the, our money can be used to kind of plus up the scope uh, and allow uh, uh, um, uh, something you're doing, likely doing already to to be more efficient or 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 prepare the property better uh, for for a, a natural hazard that you couldn't you might not have otherwise been able to afford um, in, in your scope of work. Um, so it the elements specifically is meant to cover gaps, uh, but uh, but 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 that it kind of enhance the the scope um, in in a way that meets kind of the the, the program goals. And is that. Is that when you say free or cheap? What what does that mean exactly? Is it forgiven? Yeah. Is it... so so the loan is a surplus cash loan, so it's only it's only paid if uh, it's only re uh, kind of repaid to HUD if there is available cash at the property. It's a uh, in elements, it's a twenty five percent. We 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 the loan pays twenty five percent of uh, of of surplus cash um, to to repay the loan. It's a 15 year term could be extended um, uh, uh, it, 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 as necessary. Um, uh, but uh, from that perspective, it's like, you know, that it's, it's, it's uh, um, uh, on likely on similar terms as you might receive home funds for, or, 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 or another kind of smaller grant um, or smaller grant slash soft loan. Um, uh, in, in other contexts. Okay. Okay. So it's effectively, a, it's a 15 year loan that um, it, there's only a repayment if, if there's cash left over after construction's completed. Yeah. If, if there's, if there's cash in your operations after you pay uh, expenses and pay reserves and pay any debt service and what's considered cash flow, it, it would, um, uh, 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 it would come out of the property. We, we the the loan would um, uh, make a claim on twenty five percent of that of that cash of that ongoing cash flow up up until the loan gets repaid. Um, and because these elements awards are not very large, they could get repaid. You know, they they max out at seven hundred and fifty grand. They could get repaid pretty quickly. Um, uh, and and ju and just based on on surplus cash, um, uh, or they could take fifteen or or more years to to get repaid if if the property is running on a on a on a tighter budget. Um, uh, uh, but uh, uh, yeah, in, in, in that sense, it's um, uh, it's it's it, it, it's it's not must pay debt, right? Okay. Okay. And David, I appreciate I just... it. I just pasted the link to the notice in the chat um, and pointed you to page 30. There's a lot more detail on the surplus cash loan terms. Yeah, I just saw that. Thank you for posting that. I'll, I'll take a look. But appreciate um, both of you guys. Sure. All right, let's go over to Annie. Hi. Um, we're looking at um, the uh, leading edge um, application. Um, we're working on that right now. And it was a uh, part of the uh, leading edge application. We had a question about regarding the demonstration of development team capacity. Mm -hmm. um, it's the last bullet point that's on there. It says the owner or developer has reached completion on at least three multifamily recapitalization transactions within the last five years. 
using financing similar to that proposed for the leading edge transaction and which involved more than $60,000 per unit of hard construction costs, et cetera. Um, is that, do we need to, does that need to be fulfilled for us to be, to qualify for the loan? Uh, yes. Yeah, so the, um, in order to, the, the, uh, anyone proposing a property through leading edge is going to take their property through likely, very likely through a, a, a pretty substantial rehab, just because the certifications that, um, uh, are required are, are, are fairly aggressive. Um, uh, so, uh, so we want to make sure that uh, the development team has the capacity to undertake a rehab of that scale, um, um, uh, and 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 so yeah, in the application there would need to be evidence of 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 a through transaction that 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 met that criteria. Um, and if so, we have um we have like the first two here. Um, you know, we have an architect that's, so there's like the two other, two other bullet points on there that um, we fulfill, but like the last one, I'm not sure that we do. Uh, and the last one being around the, 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 the last bullet point under demonstration of development team capacity. There's like three different bullet points. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have the NOFO up in front of me. Um, well, I have it up. It's the it's the sixty thousand dollars per unit in hard costs at three completed um, transactions. Mm -hmm. um, so you're saying, Annie, you don't think you have you as the uh, owner representative have completed three comparable transactions? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Um, and uh, Elena, is there anything in there about how? You know, it does it have to be the owner themselves that has done so, or can the so it has to be the owner or the developer? Um, so either one can help meet this requirement, and also um, the per unit cost um, includes retainage, contractor profit, overhead, general conditions, all construction costs. Um, so that sixty thousand dollars is very inclusive, but yeah, that is the requirement. And um, uh, we know another question I'll ask you is, okay. can, can an owner demonstrate that capacity by having a consultant as, as on the owner team that has uh, um, uh, has, has participated in that? Or um, is that something we might need to get back on? Yeah, the NOFO language um, is owner or developer. So this is Bennett. One, one thing, Annie, you all also may want to look at, and I'm sure you've evaluated, but looking at comprehensive as a possibility, we do not have the same level of requirements here because it's a different cohort and, and HUD will be there to support and our contractors will be there to support the owner. So I just want to clarify that that path is also an option that you may want to look at if you haven't already. Elena will just wanted to confirm that. Yep. Okay, we'll take a look at that too. Thank you so much. Okay, Paul. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm all, here also applying for a leading edge uh, grant. And I had a question about the pro forma tab in the application. Um, there isn't, there aren't many options for me to manipulate the pro forma because the cells are locked. Um, but I want to, uh, you know, we're, we're the project that I'm considering is a solar roof project, which is going to reduce the landlord's um, energy bills. You know, this is a project where it's a landlord paid um, property. It does not have a utility allowance, which is causing a lot of, um, you know, waste, energy waste. And so how can I demonstrate that? Can, I guess what I'm asking is, can I attach like a, a pro forma that's very similar and has a lot of the same um, uh, same aspects that the pro forma in the application has, um, but I can make some tweaks to it, like show that there's going to be a gradual reduction in energy 
expense. And so, Paul, is the crux of what you're trying to show that the because they're owner paid utilities that after the installation of solar, uh, the uh, property's future operating expenses will be lower? Yes, that's right. I want to. I asked it, a question at a previous uh, phone call that that the pro form. This is an existing property that we've had for three years, um, and I, I received an email or even on this panel last week or two weeks ago. I asked if the pro forma should reflect, you know, now and moving forward, assuming we're going to get a the GRP grant and the the results of that grant on operations. So that is something that I want to demonstrate. Yes. Um, I believe the, um, I want to get back to you on, uh, but, I, there should be a way within the application to show the future expected utility expenses and the lower operating expenses within the, within the pro forma. Um, uh, are you, are you saying you have, you have, uh, uh, kind of the, does the, does the application instruct you to do otherwise? You just no, I just can't do it because it's lot. It's telling me that it's password protected. I don't know if that's a function of my of our software or my computer, but it's not allowing me to make changes within the actual pro forma cells um, to to show a, a you know a larger reduction or any reduction because of there's a there's a expense inflation metric there of three or four percent. I don't remember right now that carries through for the next fifteen years. But I want to, you know, in year two or three, if we get the solar installed, I need to show a reduction in the energy costs and how yeah. that impacts. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't I suggest uh, if you haven't already, it sounds like you may have submitted this question to us over email. We'll we'll give you instructions back on on, on how best to represent that in the application. But, uh, yeah, I haven't submitted this particular question, but um. Okay. Okay. But and actually, I have a follow up question to what the previous uh, person asked about yeah. the um about the developer resume can that can that include any apartment complex developments i think the language was confusing when it talked about something similar to leading edge like um can that be any construction development capacity of building apartments be they market rate or affordable or does it have to be in the affordable space and does it have to be something um where they're working with a government agency on. I don't think we require that it need to be affordable or, or, or you know, okay. government subsidized yeah. in any way. So, I okay. So just, okay. Um, all right. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Cool. We had one other hand up, but I mean, you may have had the drop and it is 331. Um, so with that, Thanks, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you joining us today. And um, as usual, we'll post this on our website and look forward to uh, more questions or more, uh, more more scenarios next week or in future weeks, whenever you, whenever you feel like coming back to us. Um, thanks all. Have a great one.